Good evening again. Welcome to Healing Our Land. We are getting uh, started a little later than usual, but so very glad that you uh, decided to tune in. We're here every Friday night at 7 p.m. and we try to take an opportunity to uh, perhaps talk about some Bible principles, some verses, and get a better understanding as to how to apply them in our lives. So really appreciate you being with us at this time. This is being recorded, so if you happen to have an opportunity to see it live, and you desire to perhaps uh, run it over again or look at it again or make sure you get a better understanding, you can always go to the video at powertestimony.com and look for Friday's uh, schedule. And of course, we come on at 7 o'clock every Friday night live. So again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, here at Healing Our Land, our premier verse of scripture is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will pray, will seek my face, will turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now, of course, that's our God speaking to the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, and who's actually answering a prayer for Solomon. Um, when we first got started earlier in the year, it's been a few weeks you know, talking about Solomon and the dedication of the temple and perhaps the value of uh, subscribing to and believing in 2 Chronicles 7.14 is a prescription for, for repentance. It's an opportunity. It's God telling the nation of Israel, hey, guys, I really like for you guys to seek my face rather than my hand. In other words, get to know me. Talk to me. Uh, spend some time with me. So it's not so much that I don't want to bless you. It's that... Uh, I guess, I guess at some point God felt that the blessing was more important than the blesser. You know, that, that's verifiable in Scripture. We can find it in Isaiah and a number of other places in the Bible. But in terms of this evening, I've asked Mr. Vial. I'm sorry, this is Mr. Stephen Vial. If you had an opportunity to tune in to some of our other sessions, and I've been asking him to perhaps share a little information from time to time. The other thing is he's allowed me access to his home, so it makes for a really, really good opportunity to, to broadcast for him. And I'd ask him tonight to talk a little bit about John, I believe it's the 13th chapter, and it will be about the 34th verse. So that will be John 13, 34, and verses 35. And in a moment I'll read you the scripture, but, so we're going to be talking about love. We'll also be uh, uh, talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is better known as the love chapter, and kind of putting those two things together. In this, in this uh, section of the Bible, this particular verse you have, Jesus talking to his disciples, and um, he's telling them basically to love each other. And the gist of it is, if you love each other, other people will know that you're Christians by the manner in which you love each other. So when I was, when I was young, um, I, I spent a lot of time in the choir. And, you know, I, had, I had a fervor. To, to sing. I love to sing. I certainly was praising God, but I just, I just love to participate. And one of the songs we sang was, had a, had a hook, as they now say, but a refrain that, you will know we are Christians by our love. By our love. You will know we are Christians by our love. So I'm lying in bed recently, and uh, perhaps even yesterday, and that song comes to mind, and I, I you know, look up the verse, and I figured it would be a good opportunity to talk about that this evening. So, Mr. Bob, what do you, you know, introduce yourself, say hello to the folks, all that good stuff. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> and, uh, again, thank you for tuning in. What do you, what do you think about that? How are, Christ, are Christians loving in the way that God designed or desired for them to do today? Are we loving each other in that particular manner? Do we manifest it or do we evidence in a way so that it's an attractive or sweet aroma to the rest of the world, the rest of society? in terms of looking at us and how we, quote, unquote, represent our God. No. Well, I spent three, <laughs> four different, a little bit of time on addressing the question of phrasing in the, the three different ways, but the bottom line is no. Huh? No. <laughs> no. Is there, a, do you have a, a particular reason or do you have some knowledge as to why we don't? Or have you decided our problem is? What's the answer to that? Well, our problem is, is we uh, 
don't really know what love is. Okay. Uh, and we can make an ambiguous station tell me I'm supposed to love you like my brother and all that kind of stuff. That's what the Bible says. There's no distinction between people. Okay. And I'm supposed to love you just, you know, like I love myself. That's for me, that's what the commandment is. Okay. Well, so, so you're on camera. You'd be yeah, but I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm not a TV guy. I have no idea of conversations. You're just getting to watch, okay? No, I was messing with it. So, do you love me the way the Bible says you love me like your own brother? Well, absolutely, because love is kind. And so, what I thought I'd just be a little kind. <laughs> love right. is not boastful. Okay. You know, love is not, you know, love. You know, a lot of people say, well, I love you. And it's like, well, what do you mean you love me? Yeah. I mean, define love for me. Okay. Okay. No, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. Well, I, I know what it says in Corinthians. Yeah, but it doesn't tell you what love is. Okay. Well, well, it uh, tells you what love is not. Okay. Okay. Because love is kind of it's not yes. possible. It's a, it's a contradiction. You know, it's a contrast of, because nobody can define what love is. Okay. Well, what about, but as, as, a, as a people who celebrate Valentine's Day, as people who get married, and as far as people who are, are parents and we're kids and we participate in all types of ceremonies where we express our love. I think we have, don't we conceptually have some knowledge about what love is? No. Isn't it, it a wonderful feeling? No. You get the woozies and you just... No, that's lust. <laughs> and you get weak in the knees. That's, and, lust. Uh, that's all lust. Yeah, yeah. The love, the, God, the kind of God, the love God is talking about, it's not a feeling, it's a choice. It's a choice, okay. okay. So with, with that choice thing, that's a decision. So yeah. that's a decision to love your wife like Christ loves the church. Yeah. It's a decision. Or love her like you love yourself. Like right? you love yourself. Okay. And okay. It's, it's more, you know, it's be better to be a little bit more narcissistic if you think about it. Okay. If, if, if as narcissistic as we are as individuals, if we would get narcissistic and understand the Bible, which means if you were my wife, I'd send you the beauty shop. But if, you're, <laughs> if you were my wife uh, and I have a narcissistic personality, I knew what I was thinking about, I would treat you so much better. Okay. Okay, because you're you're refining to understand what the love is what the Bible is talking about. You are me. Okay. That's what the Bible talks about. Talk to the camera for I don't a moment. Want to. Talk to the camera <laughs> for a moment. So so our concept of love is not what we think it is. We need to take in, in contrast to what the scriptures tell us it is not. It is not. Okay. Well, it's just what it says. We're looking at uh, uh, John the thirteenth Saint John, the thirteenth chapter. I mean yeah, 13th chapter, looking at 34th and 35th verse. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Now that's Christ talking to his, his disciples, and he's indicating to them that a new commandment I give you, hey, you guys love each other, you know, I'm telling you, love each other. And then by the way in which you carry out the love, you demonstrate the love, everyone will know that you are my disciple. Everyone will know that you are a Christian. So again, my initial question uh, to uh, Minister Bile when we began this was, do we exhibit this type of love in a way that society would recognize that we are Christian? And his response was no. Sorry, take it away from me. Well, there's no way to you ask the question. Is there a response? No. It's because it's because we don't understand what love is and what love is not. Okay. Well, you've yeah. got to contrast it too. Okay. Well, give an explanation if you desire. First Corinthians 14, 13, 14, or something. Here it is. It describes what love is not. Okay. Okay. And you'll see by the description of what love is not, you'll find out that it's the church right in there. <laughs> you know, I didn't write the Bible. I mean, thank God, we all know that I didn't write this. I just happened to read it. You know, uh, these scriptures are, you know, pretty good. Okay. That is, if you believe the Bible is true, then if you do believe the Bible is true, then you're going to have to go with what the Word says and not what I think. All right. Well, it's so, so read that. Chapter 13, 1 Corinthians. And I'm, I'll look at it from, I'll read from the Living Bible. All right. Well, if I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them, and could speak in every language there is in all of heaven and earth, but didn't love others, I would only be making noise. If I had the gift of prophecy, and I knew all about what is going to happen in the future, knew everything about everything, but didn't love others, what good would, would it do? Even if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, I would still be worth nothing at all without love. 
if I gave everything I had to poor people, and if I were burned alive for preaching the gospel but didn't love others, it would be of no value whatsoever. Love is very patient and look, kind. Look, 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 just stop right there. Okay. Paul Silas is right there. He's, he's making a contrast. Okay. Now, we know all about the great gifts that you and I have, all the spiritual you know, things that we have. And it actually means nothing. Okay. Because here's what the deal is. We don't have love. We have a knowledge of love. Okay. Okay. And like I said, love is patient. Okay. Have you been to church and tried to get out of the parking lot lately? <laughs> <laughs> You're making a statement. I'm just trying to follow. Okay. No, I'm just asking a reporting question. Okay. Uh, How much patience do you see tolerated in the church? Folks, that's funny. But there's a, there's a truth there. And I guess we'll, well, okay. we'll yeah. leave that alone. That one's yeah. too sensitive for y'all Christians. So <laughs> let's go to the next one. Yes, sir. Well, what's the next one saying? Uh, um, so it says, love is very patient and kind. Never jealous. Well, stop right there. Got any jealousy in your congregation? Got any jealousy in your family? Are you mad that uh, Brother Grant has a better job than I have? Hmm, wait a minute. Now let's not bypass this. Because you're asking a very rhetorical question. And I'm giving you a very honest answer. You know, so if you look at the jealousy that you see in the church, and the body of Christ, you're going to see that my first statement is no, we do not exhibit because we don't even do that with each other. Mm. Okay, as a matter of fact, we're jealous of the world, we're jealous that they have nice cars and all this wonderful stuff, they got beautiful women and all these things, and whatever we don't have, we get jealous. Well, jealousy is not a fruit of the spirit, jealousy is a fruit of the flesh. So, when I start seeing just these two things in the church alone, I'm going to reinforce no, I don't see this, this love for one another that uh, Christ talks about. So, let's read the next one. I'm patient with you and your phone. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to make sure the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, never jealous or envious. Never boastful well, or proud. Wait a minute. But I'm a mighty man of God. I've got three degrees in theology. Oh, well, that's not that don't work either. I forgot about that. <laughs> I went to so and so seminary. Oh wait a minute. I followed Paul. I followed Paul and Silas. Wait a minute, that's not, that's not the Bible. Let's go ahead and the next one. <laughs> yeah, it's in the Bible, all right. And there's some admonitions against it. Oh, wait a minute, I'm not a Catholic. I'm a Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I'm, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not one of you Catholics or Baptists. I'm a I'm non-denominational. Okay, you know that makes a difference. Never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. If you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. Now that's a that's, uh, Apostle Paul speaking to a couple of knuckleheads in, in the, at the church of Corinth many, many years ago. And he's explaining to them from a Christian perspective what love is and perhaps what is not. And in considering what exhibits, uh, what exists in our church today, or even in our families, we're doing a really lousy job of persuading anyone that we're Christians if it's based on how we treat each other. What I just read, again, is found in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, and we just read through verse verse 7, and it indicates that it's forgiven. It's forgiven. It's forgiven. And it doesn't even notice when others do it wrong. It doesn't hold grudges. Now, again, I don't know where you might go to church or what, what family you belong to, but if that's an indictment or if any part of that is true, we're doing a lousy job, a terrible job of representing our Father representing our Lord and how we interact with each other. And long and short of it is we got to do better. One of the things you hear is when you know better, you got to do better. Well, folks, those of you tuning in to this, this show live, or perhaps we'll see this video at another time, you now know better, so we have a responsibility to do better. Now, Mr. Bob, Stephen, how do we do better? How do we, how do we change? How do we exhibit the kind of love that Paul speaks to it in, when he's writing to the, the, the church at court? Well, 
I'll let you all off the hook. It's not humanly possible. Okay, we're not created as human beings. Our, our first and foremost uh, human being nature is survival. So for us to act like what Paul asks us to act like is totally against our human nature. We can only do this type of stuff by the Holy Spirit. In other words, you, you have to ask the Holy Spirit to give you the Spirit, to give you a gift. And each one of these things is a gift. Patience is a gift. Kindness is a gift. Love is a gift. All these things are gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can't work them up. Yes. Okay, it's just not possible. Okay. Okay, so so we can get intellectual and say, well, Grant, I want you to take 16 classes on patience. <laughs> How I'm going to do that okay. is uh, the class on patience, I'm going to torment the snot out of you. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay. Okay, so so we can't change our human nature. Christ said we just not... We can't change a spot. Can a leopard change a spot? No. No, I can't change my human nature. That's what I am. First step about uh, learning the gifts of spirit is to tell yourself the truth. I'm not the most patient person in the world. Uh, but I do love people. And how I exhibit that sometimes, I just walk away. I don't get, <coughs> I don't get in situations that cause me frustration or the bad part of the mouth. So. Okay, but, what, but I guess... You mentioned uh, that you brought up God's Spirit in us, and certainly it is God's Spirit that allows the fruit of the Spirit to manifest, so isn't it also its Spirit that causes us to love, love in a manner that we wouldn't normally do? I mean, this Paul's word, he says, hey, take offense when, when there's a reason to be offended. Don't take offense when someone purposely does something. He's telling you, don't hold the grudge, act as though it didn't happen. Actually, Paul didn't tell you to take offense at all. Yeah, I know. That's, it's, that's, that's, that's what's issue. here. Don't that's take what offense. it is. Well, and again, as you, you mentioned, that's not humanly possible. No, so it's the supernatural that has to bring it. It's a supernatural event wherein God is, is changing us or bringing us to a point where we adequately reflect the attributes of his son. So if, but if, but if Jesus gives a command, then that's the expectation. Yeah. So we have, it is a, a, a it's not a, a, what is not crazy to examine why we're not doing it or determining how well we are doing it based on him saying, this is my commandment to you. Yeah. You guys love each other. And then everybody else will know you're my disciples. Yeah. So it yeah. sounds like in terms of around it, we should be having this inquiry. We should be asking the question, hey, how are we doing? Yeah. How, how, or how are we affecting culture? Yeah. Are we doing it what our Lord asked us to do? Because we take it a lot of time and we, we think, hey, we're living a good life. We're not hurting anyone. We're doing the right thing. We don't do a lot of the bad things. So we you know we're saying, hey, we're good. Of course, the Bible says no one good. However, so if you, once you come to Christ, it's a matter of the Spirit changing you from the inside out so that the, the gifts of the Spirit, which are found in Galatians, start manifesting in your life. So you do take on a mirror personality. You do become that new person so that you are uh, you don't do the same old stuff, but your treatment of people, the love of people, all of that's different because of the God in you. So but it, he, Christ gave a prescription. He says, hey, you guys love each other and do it in such a way that the world will know that you belong to me. Right. Now, and we, we, we call each other Christians. We always say we're Christian, but we're coming far short on loving each other in a way that, the, that Jesus asked his disciples to do. It. So it is, this is, this is a very important yeah. opportunity to discuss it tonight. We, you know, it's probably something we have to talk about maybe even next week or the week after that. But we, I don't think we can glaze over this because we're just not doing it. No, we can't glaze yeah. over it. Yeah. It's, it's the t well, you can glaze over it if you want to. Okay? But you're going to have to answer to the Lord about you know, what he's given us. He's given us the, the Holy Spirit to cooperate with and, and to, uh, to help us become and be conformed into the image of Christ. But in order for you to access the Holy Spirit, you have to be honest with yourself and say, look, I'm not meeting that standard that Christ set down. Uh, and I desire something. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He's not going to convert you into a saint without your, your agreement. In other words, it, it's, a, it's about choice. You, you, can, you can choose this way or you can choose that way. You, we have the freedom to choose. So, so I guess as a bottom line or baseline, you're saying you're starts with your conversion 
and come and becoming a Christian or, be, or accepting Christ as your Savior, and then having the Holy Spirit or God's Spirit right. to, to reside in you. And certainly, the point he's making is that he indicated the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Uh, the Spirit is not going to contend with you for ownership. All right, we were bought with a price. All right, when Christ died for us, you know, we were bought with a price. And that's a very high price. Yeah. In terms of us recognizing that we were in a sinful state, and here, here uh, by Christ's death, He redeems us back to His Father. He pays a, 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 the penalty for sin that we couldn't that we couldn't pay. So a realization is that we are no longer our own. And how is that manifested? By us turning over our lives, our the, our desire to say yes or no to God the Father. In other words, yielding and surrendering our ability to say yes or no and be autonomous to basically say to submission to the Father. And that's 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 kind of important. And perhaps that's maybe that's one of the reasons that uh, we don't see love manifested in our daily lives from each other, towards each other, by those who profess to be Christians and followers of Christ, because we're not yielded uh, our lives to him. Perhaps even we uh, we don't remember the scripture, perhaps Maybe that's one of the reasons why God gave it to us tonight to discuss, so that we would love each other as Christ, as Christ indicated. The beginning of the scripture, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So, folks, we're, just, we're not getting it done. We're not getting it done. Folks, we're not running out of time, but I want to ask you to consider something. If this is you, if you're one of those persons who uh, are jealous, uh, you're envious, or you're boastful, you're prideful, uh, you honestly, you, you enjoy seeing other people suffer, or you're not sharing mercy, you, you're enjoying the injustice that you see people experiencing all the time, all right? you are glorying or go be taking uh, in your prideful state, you are taking responsibility for how good you are when it's not it's not you. In other words, you spend your life, and he said narcissistically, but you spend yourself being consumed with nothing but you rather than having the needs of your brothers and sisters uh, met, then perhaps you need to read the scripture. Again, the, the love chapter in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, you know, it's pretty honest as far as what we're supposed to do, much less love your wife like Christ loved the church, much less love God first and then love man. We, we, we really need to address that. So if this is you, take an opportunity to see, examine yourself, see where you fall into this. And if you decide that I'm way short of what Christ's prescription is, simply repent. And that simply means make a decision about what you recognize now as sin. Decide you don't desire to do it. Confess it to God. And he indicates he'll forgive you of it. And then he'll also take an opportunity to change you from the inside out on that very point. That thing that you're saying you don't want to do, he'll take it away. First one, John 1, 9 says that he'll take the iniquity away. He'll cleanse you of all iniquity, which means all sin. So he'll change you from the inside out. And I must confess at times, and you know, I'm probably not the best example or follower either, but I desire to be do better. I desire to love Stephen as my brother. Hmm. And have all the patience in the world. Mm, well, I don't think maybe <laughs> the patience is necessary, but it's a desire. Now, knowing that I can't do it by myself, I can't keep me from sinning, then certainly I can ask God to not assist, but to actually bring it about uh, as, a, as, a, as a prayer request so that I can exhibit the love and those attributes that he's indicated in his word. Yeah, yeah. It's not, a, it's not an easy thing to do. It's impossible to do. Uh, with our own flesh, and that, and that's what I think people don't understand. You know, we talk a lot of words, you know, like like the word sin. You know, and it, we don't we don't know what sin means any more than we know what the uh, statement love means. Um, and so, what I like to do is point out is the, the sin just means you missed the mark. You're you're not you're not this, the God had a better plan for us, and you know we're we're missing that mark. We're missing that opportunity. So when we, we don't want to beat each other up about being lack of patience as a sin or lack of love as a sin. Okay. Uh, because that's a high standard that God has called us to. 
But but the thing is, if we if we think if we think that we can do these things without the Holy Spirit, or without being truly honest and without being uh, vulnerable uh, or transparent, it, it ain't gonna happen. It's just not going to happen. It's going to be a reoccurring pattern over and over and over again. Well, apparently it is a reoccurring pattern over and over again. And we kind yes. of got to bring the attention to some of, of, of what we're not doing. But, I mean, it's if a, certainly as a, a member of a family who has children or who or one who has a mom and a dad, you have siblings, there's a, there's a bond there. I yeah. mean, it, it's based on family. Based on family, there's something in you that it responds to family love. In other words, there's a loyalty there. There's an acknowledgement that we have the same lineage. There's an acknowledgement that that you're supposed to want my best good and I'm supposed to want that for you. Right. I, and we we call that a feeling and we, but the, you see we, we call it love. Well, you if you see it anywhere, that's where you see it. But you don't, certainly we don't do enough well, love. You're supposed to see it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we don't you do don't enough see it as much of it. Well, well, would, would you agree, and perhaps uh, for those of you uh, who, who are listening, if you'd like to email us or something to get in contact with us, you can try Grant Coleman uh, at 2 Chronicles 7 b 14org I'm available on the computer, and I'd love to hear from you. But for those of you who see this on a, uh, on, a, on a video later on, still take an opportunity and send us an email. Let us know about what you think about the show and perhaps about this topic. Now, what I was going to say is, um, with Second Chronicles 7.14, God is asking us to repent. Now, you, we talked briefly about sin, and you were saying, hey, don't look at it as that, as that concept, because that's too hard for us to, 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 to wrap our arms and our minds around. But if you, in Matthew, it's, Jesus speaks to his disciples about forgiveness, and he indicates in a prayer that if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Now, if we're not willing to forgive, and then we hold grudges, all right? So isn't the bottom line of the problem is that we just choose to hold on to things that we shouldn't? You just mentioned, I read the scripture, and you indicated, said, hey, Paul said don't even take offense. Right. He didn't mention anything about if you desire, if you was, if it was warranted. If, you know, he didn't do, address that at all. He just says don't take offense, yeah. which means that you automatically forgive. You automatically just desire make a decision to forgive so that well, you actually, won't proceed to take it as an offense. Actually, that's a step before that. Okay. You know, it's it's understandable. But it's it's not like like Jesus did not not have to take offense. Yes. Okay. He, he didn't have to work at not taking offense. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I like to tell everybody is it's pretty hard to be offended if you're a dead man. Okay. And you. Okay, and I mean a dead man. Explain to them. A dead man is a, is a man that, that has died and, and uh, been crucified with Christ and resurrected. In other words, their flesh is pretty much done with. Uh, it really boils down to this. Is that I don't have a high standard of who I am. In other words, I don't think I'm a great this or a great that or whatever. So when somebody tries to insult me uh, and you tell me I'm less than anything, then I don't even pay attention to you because I never thought I was something in the first place. Okay. Okay. So, so my my worldly flesh, my worldly thinking has has been put to death. I don't think the way the average person would think about things. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I, I, as a frame I use, you can't offend a dead man. Okay. Okay. And and that's what I am. I'm a dead man. That's what Paul says. He's dead to the world. Okay. I'm dead. Well, but but again, if you if using <laughs> using uh, your statement as far as what you perceive or believe yourself to be. You've surrendered to Christ. You're no longer your own. So therefore, you're His. So you are a walking dead man or a person who's, who's who submitted themselves to Christ. Yeah. Well, folks, that's what He asked us to do. He talks about taking up your cross daily and following after Him. And the things that He calls after you, that that's part of it. But we're all on that. Pro we're all in the process. <clears throat> we're all we're all uh, being developed or being changed into that, so that you. Ultimately, we'll say, I'm no longer my own. Yeah. Uh, you give yourself away. You now belong to the Lord. Yeah. So if you haven't reached that, I can't tell you it's, it's okay, but it's understandable because it's a process. But it begins with a decision. And the decision is that, a, I, that Christ died for me so that I may not die, so I can live forever, so that I can spend eternity with 
the God who created me. Christ died for me so that I would no longer be in bondage to sin, so that I have the ability to say no to my flesh and walk out in a way that would be pleasing to God. Now, that's a decision. And by the way, that's what salvation represents. So, folks, we are running out of time for this episode. We're right at about 20, 29 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, I've had an awesome time in speaking with you because this is dear to my heart. God laid it on my heart to talk about it. And I drafted my buddy here so we could, you know, at least uh, exchange some conversation about it. I'm very happy that you tuned in. But allow me to invite you back next week. We know we're finished uh, or, or, or completed this conversation. We really need to do better. Uh, if, if Christ indicated that's how others will know that you are a Christian, the fact that we profess it, maybe that's the reason they're going, you're not a good one. Maybe that's the reason why they're saying, you can't tell me anything about your God because I don't see it walked out in a way that, by the way, I read that scripture and I don't see it. Maybe our actions or lack thereof are turning people off to Christianity. So, Folks, think about that. You know, those who, you know, those of you who are watching and perhaps those who see this, get some consideration of that. Let's dialogue about it perhaps next week. Again, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, perhaps we're on a computer. Uh, you know, just, just email us. Again, that's at Grant Coleman at 2 Chronicles 7v14.org. And matter of fact, I'll try to get a couple of emails for you so that you make it easier for you if that's difficult. So that we want to hear from you. I mean, we're available by email. We're available by chat. Um, and this is something that it's on my heart, so I believe God desires us to dialogue about it and perhaps even uh, take it back, uh, remind some people in the world. But thank you so much, Mr. Val. It's always a pleasure to you. shake your hand on the air. Uh, you know, I drafted it into, he's a teacher, right? Well, he desires to teach. His, one of the gifts that he has is being able to teach, being able to share, break it down in a manner that uh, it's, it's easy to understand. So I hope our efforts this evening, this evening have uh, given you some information that you can, something to chew on. And in the process of your mulling it over, that you get a better understanding as to where we need to be, what we should be doing for the world to see us and be attracted to our God. So Father, thank you for this opportunity just to share a word. I thank you for my brother Stephen. I thank you for those who are watching. I thank you for those who will have an opportunity to see it at a later time. Father, we fall short so very, very often of the things that you ask us to do. Even when we desire no longer to be rebels, we just don't do a good job of representing you. So, Father, we seek our, we, we ask your forgiveness for that. We're just flesh creatures and we're trying to do better. And, Father, Brother Stephen and I are going to share some information with all that we see to ask them to do better. But when you know more, you do better. When you do, you do better after you have the knowledge. So allow us to, to share it in a way that is understandable, that's gleaned, and then therefore it's, you can apply it in each, each and everybody's life. But Father, we serve a risen Savior. We declare him to be our Lord and our King. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, by the way, folks, see you next week.